Well, welcome back. We've just done about 280 or so devotionals covering the book of Jeremiah. And although I'm sure some of us are ready to move on to something else, the book of Lamentations is only 154 verses. And it's kind of like getting to the dessert after all the grim reading in those 52 chapters of Jeremiah. We're going to go ahead with the Lamentations, and then we'll likely move on to a New Testament book. The Bible contains many genres, many different kinds of writing. All of it, of course, is inspired, but different kinds of writing work in different ways. Narrative more or less tells us about events that, that actually happened. Apocalyptic prophecies clothe the truth in symbols. We interpret the different kinds of genres differently. One of the kinds of genres in the Bible, one kind of inspired writing, is called the lament. And the book of Lamentations, as you might not be surprised, is one of the primary examples of the lament. It's a highly poetic book, although Hebrew poetry is, is quite a bit different than English poetry. So here's some necessary background. The people of the kingdom of Judah refused to follow God's guidance to submit to the king of Babylon. And so Babylonian armies were, are sent and eventually they overcome the Hebrew defenders. Most of the people who survived a two and a half year siege were carried away, led away to captivity in Babylon. They would finish out their lives, almost all of them would die their 70 years captivity in Babylon. And you might have noticed that everything in this book, there's just five chapters, you might have noticed everything's in multiples of 22. And the reason why is because there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, the biblical Hebrew, and it starts with Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, He, and so on. You might not be surprised to realize that each of these verses in the Hebrew starts with that next letter in the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, is kind of how we would do it in English. And yet, so we have these multiples of 22 all the way through chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3 is 66, and the last two chapters are 22s. So just an interesting piece about this uh, fascinating kind of poetic thing now we're going to look at. I'm going to read the first few verses and then comment briefly. How lonely sits the city that was full of people. How like a widow is she who was great among the nations. The princess among the provinces has become a slave. She weeps bitterly in the night. Her tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into captivity under affliction and hard servitude. She dwells among the nations. She finds no rest. All her persecutors overtake her in dire straits. So here's a picture of sorrow. The king of Judah, he, he worked relentlessly, tirelessly to try to make alliances with the different nations, Egypt especially, and some of the others. But every time they, the, the other nations were kind of half-hearted, and it always worked out terribly. They were up against the might of Babylon, but far more than the might of Babylon, God was punishing Israel. He was chastening his people for their sin against him. He was trying to get their attention. And so, because he loved them, he was himself against them. So this is what came to be. And now after they've been carried to captivity, here's Jeremiah speaking about the devastation and of that period and, and how hopeless it seems. And yet we're going to find hope as we continue to read. So God is against the disobedience of his people and he's working to lead them to repentance. And here's a lesson for us today. We need to be very careful who and what we put our trust in. The kingdom of Judah trusted in the wrong stuff. They should have trusted in the God of heaven, but they didn't. And now they paid a, a very heavy price. But we're carrying on through and we're going to find hope as we carry on. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, please bless each one who is viewing this devotional. Uh, please bless us and help us to learn to trust completely in you. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we, we ask. Amen. Have a wonderful day in the Lord.